Well hello my fellow video gamers and let's players, I am Plays, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. In the last episode, I rambled on a lot about a whole bunch of different concepts in this game. I don't think I really touched upon the story, but I talked a lot and that made a whole bunch of conversations not go fully finished I guess you would say, but we did go through Turtle Woods, Snow Go, and Hang 8 in the last episode, where in this episode we're going to be going into the pits. Because like I said in the last episode, the pits are quite stinky. But if you actually go in here, you'll see a little bit of a resemblance to an older level, I guess you could say. Because look at this, the level looks almost exactly like the level we did for like the first level in the game. But it is a little bit harder because there are some extra enemies that we are going to be running into. Like these little purple bird things that you can only jump on. I believe there were there was like one of those guys in the previous... I mean in the first level is what I'm trying to say. But I was a little bit confused as to why that TNT did not blow up when that happened. I will never know and who knows if I will ever know that that happened. I don't know. I'm gonna try just to get this like wampa fruit from here because I do not believe you get all the wampa fruit from these boxes if you do not do the 10 bounces on these because yeah I mean you get the regular wampa fruit from that box but you don't get it from the other and oh god that's a little bit of a tricky one which I did not end up jumping on in the first place because of reasons. And those reasons being, or at least it was kind of one reason, it's just I kind of missed the jump. But luckily I don't think they go back to swoop at you, I'm not sure. But I do see something I can do after I find out how to get on here, even though I was saying that right when I found out how to get on there. So it was kind of a little bit worthless, but we are going to be going invincible and not even have to worry about those guys. But now we have a little bit of a sectioned off path here which I believe we have to go down both if you want to get the box gem here which I guess I will show off going down both now I'm not exactly sure when this is gonna be running out hopefully yes okay good I was able to get that before it actually ran out but sadly I was not able to get this guy which I want to get back here so I don't accidentally like when I'm jumping on the guy end up hitting this guy in the process but the really bad thing is that I just realized is that I believe the crystal is on the other pathway and I don't even know what that opened. I honestly don't know what that crate thing opened. I'm not exactly sure if it's back here or not. I'm not even going to be going back there because I do not want to risk backtracking and then dying and then having to uh, start from the last checkpoint even though starting from the last checkpoint is not as bad as it was in Crash 1. Because if you are trying to, like, if you were trying to 100% Crash Bandicoot 1, in order to actually 100% the game, I was trying to slide jump into that guy, but it didn't work. But if you're trying to 100% Crash 1, you have to go through the whole entire level without dying and collect all the boxes, which really sucked. Because if you die just once, you had to restart, which was not a good thing. Now, I believe there are a few boxes back here if we do go back here. And that's a little freaky how the bird automatically just appears there out of nowhere. I mean, I guess. I don't know. Well, I mean, they don't. the game doesn't expect you to be going backwards, even though the only way you can get through this and try to do... Can I please, like, slide into you correctly? Okay, I guess I can't because I cannot have nice things. There we go. That is the way you're actually supposed to beat those guys. Now, if I am lucky enough, I think I'll be able to just jump over those guys, and I can keep going backward just to see if there's any more boxes on this path. You know what? I do not care if there are any boxes on that path or not, because I don't even remember where... Okay, the last checkpoint was here. Okay, I need to be careful. I did not even think I jumped on that guy, but whatever. Now, I am going to not even care about the boxes on the other path. Because I have no more Aku Aku. And I do not feel like dying in one hit. Even though I... Actually, I would die in one hit no matter what. But you know what I mean. I don't feel like getting hit in a stupid way. So, okay, that... 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 That, that is where the crystal once was. And now I can finally defeat those guys with no problem whatsoever. And hi -yi -yi. I get scared every time I see the freaking hit detection on those things. I mean, I don't see it, but I'm just wondering, like, where's the actual hit detection? Because when I think I accidentally, like, rubbed up against the spike, I ended up not actually rubbing up against the spike. And look at this... We're back in the pits again, 
So I guess these are called pits in a way because that's that. And also, that took a lot longer than the other one. But it is a later level, so I guess it's supposed to take longer. Because I believe this level's actually longer to begin with. And oh, look at that. Well, first, I'm actually going to be jumping ten times here to get this box. But we have an introduction of a new box. Like, that one is the TNT crate. You jump on it, counts down to three and stuff. I never actually talked about that. But that box I just destroyed was a steel crate, I think is what it's called. Those boxes, if you jump on them... What am I trying to say? If you jump on them regularly or spin into them, it does not work or you do not actually break them or whatever. But if you do them, if you do them correctly, you know what I mean. I'm trying to say, like, if you do a ground pound belly flop thing there, that is the only way you can break them. Now, I'm not, okay, that's where this thing is. I'm going to try to do this. And when I say try, I mean I'm going to try to do this. I am a disgrace to my family. Do I want to try... Okay, well, I guess it's just going to open by... it. Okay, I can actually stay in the air for a really long time there if I really wanted to. But I'm going to try this once more. Maybe second time is going to be the time for me, even though it's usually third time is the charm. I believe in the power of the car... Okay, the power of the cards is not with me. I'm going to try that for a third time to see if the third time is actually the charm. One of these days, I might think of actually using the D-pad here, because that might work a little bit better in these three, like, the, why am I calling it 3D sections? I mean the 2D sections. Also, I'm on the other side of the box. I did not even know that was possible, that you could be on the other side of the box here, but... You know what? I'm not even going to be caring about those boxes there. I'm just going to be breaking these to get as much Wampa Fruit as I can. Because earlier I was thinking, what's the point of breaking any of the boxes if you're not going to be going for 100%? And that point is that you actually get Wampa Fruit and extra lives. And we all know that I'm going to be needing the extra lives. Because look at that. Even though I don't be- I don't- I don't be thinking, that's like- I'm, I'm like a rapper all of a sudden with my grammar, but what I'm trying to say is I don't think I'm gonna be getting a game over at least any time soon, because I don't think I'm gonna be dying 22 times. Now, if I do die 22 times, I'm going to be quite sad. Now, since I have not gotten all the boxes, I am not going to be so much of a stickler for that, and oh my god, how many of these pits are in this level? This is our third pit, and the pit wasn't even that much later after the other pit. Now, if those rats, I believe if you don't hit them fast enough, they will come out of the ground, but they're not going to hurt you, and okay, let's just, uh, see how weird this entrance is, like, you don't see it, and then all of a sudden, you're walking up, and then it's kind of, like, curved like that. How many boxes did I actually... Oh, I missed a decent amount of boxes, okay. So, I don't even know if that was only in that one area. Actually, wait, I know where that was. I didn't backtrack in that one area, so of course I missed boxes there, but who cares... I am perfectly fine with just getting the crystal from the pits. And we are like nine minutes in this episode. This is what I'm expecting this Let's Play to be. Me spending a whole crap load of time on one level, and possibly maybe only getting one level done in an episode. Now, that might be weird, but another thing that will be weird is that we're kind of running away from the camera. There is a big reason why we are running away from the camera, and I know this from my childhood. Look at that, we are getting chased by a boulder. This is another mechanic in this game where we have to actually run against the camera. Even though, at least in like these levels, the camera is actually zoomed out a little bit, so you are able to actually see what is in front of you, like jumps and stuff. Now, I guess if you want to compare this to something, this is kind of like an Indiana Jones-esque level where the boulder is chasing you. These were actually also in Crash Bandicoot 1 and that was a really weird break. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to be calling that break, because that was like an I gotta itch my nose kind of break, because my nose was really itchy there for a second. You want to really be careful of these things. Those things do not, like those weird jumpy things do not hurt you. Those electric fences do though, but those jumpy things do not hurt you, but they do make it so you stall when you land, so you want to be really careful about that. Also, I do not exactly know why there are, there is like a, not fence, what am I talking about? A bridge there. Because this bridge here, when it breaks it open, the ball will actually fall in there. I should not call it a ball, I probably should be calling it a boulder, because it is the size of a boulder if you look at it. Is it an over-the-shoulder boulder holder? No, it is not. It is the boulder that the over-the-shoulder boulder holder actually holds. Now, 
this is a little bit of a funky thing here. I kind of did that the wrong... I mean, I did it the right way, but I accidentally went the wrong way for a second, and I am not going to be getting that life, because that life is going to be flying after it blows up. Yeah, I believe if you want to hit that correctly, you can, but I'm going to be counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes, those take 10 bounces, and if you are not counting... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. If you are not... Also, if you're not holding forward, or in my case, right on the control stick, you also jump off the side like that, and that is not cool. Now, I might not be raging yet, but we'll see if I will be raging later in this game. I hope I am not going to be raging too much, because in my Let's Plays, I try not to rage too much. By that, I mean, let me see if I can actually get this... Oh god, I actually did that correctly. I am really surprised with myself. What I'm trying to say is, in my Let's Plays, I try to at least not uh, rage too much now. Because I used to rage a lot, and then I found out that that is really not good for me. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a health reason. It's more of a, I just don't want to ruin my voice because, well... When you're yelling like that, at least for me, when I'm actually yelling like that, it hurts your voice, man. Because my voice is kind of a smooth voice, I guess you could say. I know it's really weird, but my voice I would never consider to be raspy. Especially because when... I should not have tried going for that box. Like, I'm not getting the box gem anyways, because I missed boxes. Why am I trying to go for a box that I've already, like, mit? Like... Why am I trying to go for a box that is kind of out of the way? So we are not even going to be caring about that box right now. Even though I think it actually destroys it by itself, but I forgot that you actually kind of want to get on those things. Oh god, okay. We are starting to get very tricky with this, and I know I'm going off the topic of what I was originally talking about, but I really want to make sure that I don't accidentally mess something up and... Yeah, I believe we beat the level. And also at the end of the level of the boulder chases, Crash does that cool little Indiana Jones thing. Also... We are not getting those boxes. They will forever be taunting us right there. I really wish I have an Aku, I had an Aku Aku right now. We missed exactly 11 boxes. I don't know why I said exactly 11 boxes, but we did miss 11 boxes. But all five levels we can get in this little area are done. So yeah, th that's the end of the game. There's only five levels within this game. No, no, there's more than five. Listen up. We are not without enemies. Some of them you may even recognize. Although they cannot harm you inside this warp room, they can attack you on your way to the next one. To get to the next warp room, use the platform that appears in the center of the room. Good luck. Well, I guess it's time for us to go to the next section of the warp room, which is what it's actually called. And when Crash does that little up thing, I believe we have to actually press up on the D-pad in order to go up. I thought he was going to go up by himself, but he did not. But we do have a boss fight. If it'll load. And this boss is Ripper Roo. Yes, he totally sounds like almost a Japanese. I am not stupid. I um oh god, get out of the way. I what I was trying to say was I almost said what was I trying to say? I almost said Japanese, but I meant Australian is what I'm trying to say here. But this boss fight is very sectioned, I guess you could say, because he lays down a whole bunch of TNT, and then he lays down a whole bunch of nitros, and you have to make sure you watch out for these things. Also, the TNT has like a six count for some reason, I'm not sure, but when I mean cycled, I mean... Yeah, I meant to go down, but my control stick made me go up for a second. Now, the weird thing about the Crash series is that when you actually, like, die on a level, you, like, at least on a... What I'm trying to say is when you die on a boss... Whoa, whoa, what? Oh, crap. I'm stupid, I forgot. You have to do the freaking uh, nitros before you actually get a hit on them. Why am I stupid? I was even talking about having him to, like, make him have, like, fried chicken, or, like, chicken there or something. I don't know. I keep going there, and, like, the pattern never changes, so I don't know why I keep going over there. All I know is I think I'm supposed to stay right around here and then move a little bit. Okay, do not hit him. We already know what happened the one time I tried hitting him. Now, where are you gonna go? You're probably not gonna go... Probably gonna go really close to... Actually, no, I think this is still safe. 
Yeah, that little corner thing there was still safe. Now, hopefully, hopefully, I go, oh God, not here, not here. Now, where are you going to be going now? I know this is just riveting commentary right now, but I need to make sure I don't accidentally get hit by this guy. Okay, now, I remember this nitro sequence here being really dickish. Okay, watch out, there we go. And now, come on, where are you going to be? You're going to be right there. Oh, God, get out of the way. Can you stand here? Yes, and we have defeated Ripperoo. I believe we only died once, which is really good because I remember one time trying to fight this guy. I did not only die once. I think I died a few times, but that was because I was playing this on the PS2 where I was only able to use the D-pad. And this game with a, only a D-pad, at least for some levels, is kind of bad. And yet another cutscene. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Ripperoo failed to prove much of a challenge yet again. But back to business. There are crystals to be gathered. Twenty to be exact. The planets will align shortly, all thirteen of them. And this will create a power great enough to rip the Earth apart. Properly utilized, however, the crystals can absorb and contain the energy. I don't have much time to tell you this. You have to be careful. Trusting Cortex seems a little unwise. Crash, I can't keep the data pack open this forever. Crash, you need to... One of these days, I think Crash will actually get it that we are in the wrong. Cortex is not doing something good, but for now we're going to be jumping on this polar bear. Now you might be thinking I'm just an animal abuser and might be calling like PETA's phone number right now, but there is a reason I am jumping on this polar bear, because I believe once you jump on him 10 times, it will give you 10 lives. It is a really weird easter egg that I've only gotten through Let's Plays, but now we have 32 lives, which is really nice. Now, another thing I want to do before this episode, first I want to show that if you press down on the deep I meant to go here. If you stand here and then if you press down on the D-pad, you can go to the previous section of the warp room and then if you wait for him to point up or if you actually press the up arrow thing or whatever D-pad thing, you go back. That is how you get between warp room and warp room. Now, can we get off? Thank you. Now, I what I also want to show is that right here, if you go here and press, or actually you don't even have to press triangle, this is where you save the game. Yes, there is no auto save because that it wasn't a thing and also... Uh, th that picture is just priceless. We're gonna be saving the game. If you want to know, that was the file that I did a little bit on. Like, just a little bit. But here is one we're gonna be saving over. I was about to say, like, what do we have the save, like, same progress? But that was because I never actually overrided which save file I wanted. And this makes it so you can have multiple different save files, which is really nice. But, anyways, that is about it for this episode of Let's Play Crash Bandicoot 2. Now we are into the second tier of levels. This is where I'm probably going to start sucking a lot. Hopefully I won't suck too much, but I'm probably going to suck a decent amount. Maybe like half the dick in the world. That's kind of an ongoing joke I used to have with a friend. But anyways, in the next episode, we're going to be going into Snowbiz. And maybe showing the showbiz who's boss. That was stupid. So anyways, this has been Juddleplay saying see you later and goodbye. I said Juddle plays really fast there, but then again it always seems like I do. Goodbye.